Hey guys, this is Creativity Unleashed, and in this video, I want to check out this welding machine I found on Amazon. It's about eighty dollars, eighty some dollars, so that's pretty cheap for welding machines. Um, so I'm a certified structural and pipe welder. I've been welding since I was eleven. Used all kinds of welding machines. So we'll actually find out what they're talking about if it's true. <laughs> um, this is the actually the second product. The first one I got did not even turn on. So let's unbox it and see what it's like. And instruction manual. Stinger. Ground clamp. The actual adapter from 110 to 220. And So pretty straightforward. I'm going to actually put a little bit of lubrication inside of these. It does not hurt it. Um, to help them come apart later. So when you put these things together, sometimes they will not like want to come apart. All right, let's see if it turns on. Yeah, this one functions. All right, I'll get this stuff set up and we'll do a weld test here. Alright, so I've tinkered around with the machine a good bit, ran uh, three bead multi fillet welds on with 7018 8th inch, and I'm only running on a 15 amp breaker, and it's been kicking a couple times now because uh, it's now good and hot, the breaker, um, but for limited power supply and running 8th inch 7018, most most machines that I've run that are only 110 really don't like 8th inch rods, and it was running them really well. I turned up the amperage a little bit more for the 6010 and ran another one, and that thing was penetrating and having no problem staying lit. So this is the previous shot at 72 amps, which is really an open root um, amperage. Um, usually run them a lot hotter for fillet welds like this is, so it was stuttering quite a bit and having a bit of trouble staying lit. But once they turn the amperage up, it fixed the problem pretty much entirely. Equipment, the ground here, all copper, nice mesh in there, good bolts. The cable itself is super flexible and just really comfortable. It's not like that really stiff stuff that drives you crazy. On um, the stinger, nothing crazy, just a basic stinger. Um, and obviously you can always put on something better if you wanted to, um, but it definitely does the job, it's, it's good. Um, the unit weighs about, what, 12 pounds, I think it says, and um, dual voltage up to 160 amps and um, 220 volts, and I was running like up to 105, 110, I think, on this thing on 110. So that is incredibly impressive and it runs really smooth, I mean, that, that is really impressive. Um, obviously it's a little disappointment that the first machine arrived and did not turn on, but they were very quick to um, send me another one, and so very happy with that. Seems like a great unit, so you might want to consider it if you're on a budget, <laughs> or not. So I'm at one of my friend's farms. They were driving their tractor the other day and carrying hay bales, and their attachment for the hay bales um, sheared off and broke. Um, apparently it had been 
under a lot of stress for a while. So this is about a half inch by three inch piece of plate. So um, here is the piece that actually broke off. I am going to bevel on both sides to make a um, double bevel on both sides and then fill it all out with 7018 332nd inch rod and this we started on a, a 15 amp breaker and then that popped so I found a 20 amp and hooked it up and went a lot better. But so far I've been highly impressed with the unit. It's one of its only downsides is it doesn't have really a hot start. It has basically a traditional arc start like you would expect on a, um, a normal coil machine. So I'm using an on-off strong hands 90 degree 45 degree magnet and um, they're really handy um, for getting things square or holding things straight when you only got two hands like most humans so they're very helpful. For me this machine is incredibly impressive that just about anyone um, can spend a hundred dollars be able to master welding be able to do high quality welding um, and um, do all that in a very compact case that weighs 12 pounds and yeah it's just hard to believe for for that price you can get a product that does such a good job well it looks like i tripped the circuit breaker well that isn't looking too bad there Kind of annoying to trip the circuit breaker. Well, got a few more beads to fill it in. I always get a really good laugh when people complain that they're well don't turn out well because their machine sucks and it's actually the operator doesn't know what they're doing. Um, shielded metal arc welding or stick welding is a very challenging process to do and to really master um, but don't don't shy away from it just because it's one of the more difficult processes once you get it figured out you can do amazing work and it's very satisfying and the other thing to keep in mind is that MIG welding might seem to be a lot easier, but it's a lot easier to make a weld look good that can actually break really easily. Wow, that went in right well. Perfect. If I can go get my brush. And just to keep in mind, the uh, machine is a very inexpensive machine too. It doesn't have quite the same capacitors and things inside. So there are times I've noticed the arc being a bit weak and wandering some. Not as much on 7018, but when I was running 6013, maybe there were my rods or um, the way it was grounded or the metal wasn't clean enough. Um, but it just seems like it wanted to not have a very driving arc, which still... Um, a little bit disappointing, but it, it also could have been due to the power supply only being on a 15 amp breaker, but sometimes can do it as well. So I have not run the machine yet on 220, and usually they run a lot better. On 220 it usually fixes a lot of the art characteristics that seem poor. Oh yeah, that's my boy. 
And that's why I'm a bona fide welder right there. And I'm only running the machine 95 amps. This thing goes up to 160. So, just to get an idea of like what you actually use to run this puppy. There you go. Got a couple more fillet welds to do. Probably at least three beads more. Maybe more. We'll see. And if you're looking to spend a bit more money to get a better machine um, than this, I really like the Everlast company. I've used quite a few um, different machines of theirs. Um, I have more views of some of them on my channel. And they do have better hot starts and art characteristics. And they're put together, I think, a bit better but they do cost several times as much. As well as Aesop makes incredible machines if you're planning to spend quite a bit more. I hope you guys found this helpful and um, have a great day out there. And if you're interested, check out Creativity Unleashed. You know, see that puppy's lifting right off? Ah, not too bad, shabby looking. Even though I like had a gazillion art stopped and getting used to running a machine on a totally new machine. This function is a little different. It's cold out here too. Yes. But there's no undercut. And that's a little looking bead right there. I know, I know it's not a pipeline, but I thought it wouldn't hurt to put on a little bit of sea weavy there. I may do another video of running it on 220 and see how Technically a good grind of flesh, but there's no need to, so call that a day.